Every 40 seconds, a child becomes missing or is abducted in the United States. Although most of these abductions are family-related, child abductions by strangers are considered the most dangerous and may be the most difficult to crack. This morning, we bring you the case of J.C. Dugard, a young girl from California who was kidnapped by a stranger over three and a half years ago. We were very, very close, like sisters. Introverted child, very shy. Um, but once you did make friends, you made them for life. She was, you know, she would pull you into her little world and you'd be your friend. A piece of me is missing, definitely. A um, piece of my heart. I feel like it's been ripped. And I don't feel like a complete person all the time because she's not here to fulfill that. The morning of June 10, 1991 was like most other school day mornings at JC's home. Her mother had rushed off to work, so JC got herself ready for school and left the house at 8.05 a.m. JC's stepfather, Carl Proben, was working in the garage and said goodbye to her as she walked to catch the school bus. As JC left the driveway, Carl noticed a gray two-door car drive by the house. The car made a U-turn below the driveway. As the car went back up the hill, Carl saw a female passenger in the car. He thought the occupants were lost or needed directions. As the car neared JC, it crossed the road in front of her. Carl saw the driver's door open and heard JC scream. Unable to find his keys, Carl grabbed a bicycle and tried to follow the car, but it was too late. I wish I would have had my keys in my pocket. It catches you totally off guard. They had the advantage. They had the car and, you know. But you never think it's going to happen to you. You know, initially, people were kind of in shock uh, that it could happen to their community. Well, South Lake Tahoe is a kind of a very mellow town. It's a tourist area. You know, the kidnapping was a unique case. It's been a, a unique experience. We're still actively investigating leads uh, and reevaluating. I mean, we're in a, a phase now where uh, we're going back and we're reevaluating everything we did. After the car sped off, Carl called 911. Within the hour, police officers were at Carl and Terry's home. Police started searching the neighborhood, looking for the two-tone gray car. Neighbors were called upon to see if there were other witnesses. There weren't any. Descriptions of the car and the female passenger were distributed throughout the community. Pictures of JC were placed in storefronts, and Carl and Terry embarked on what turned out to be an endless campaign to find their daughter. She's ever a teacher's dream. I mean, she was, she was responsive in class. She always did her work on, on time. Um, she was cooperative, and she worked well with other kids. I would say there isn't a week's period that goes by that in some way um, I don't get, I, something doesn't come into my mind about JC. Even to this day, uh, parents in this community are fearful. Um, they are very keenly aware as to any kind of situation that occurs here, and they want to make sure that school is a safe place and this community is a safe place for their children. JC's classmates were shattered by her disappearance. Since the abduction, the elementary school has introduced some safeguards of its own, and teachers encourage children to run and scream if strangers approach them. Unfortunately, in your stranger abductions, um, rarely do you have a good ending. We probably, over the last three years, have received over 10,000 sightings on JC. Unfortunately, they d diminish the longer a case goes on. This is JC's room. It's pretty much the way it was. I've added a few things, some of her things that she had stuffed in the drawer that I thought needed to be brought out. And I definitely like to be in here. Brings back memories, good memories of all the good times that we had. And then that puts me, that puts me close to Jace. So I like coming in and being next to her. Even though she's not here, she's still in my heart. Here's this one. Ah, little tiny baby, look how fat she was. JC was the oldest of two children. The parents had moved to South Lake Tahoe nine months before her abduction. They thought it would be safer there than Orange County, California, where they had lived before. It's just hard to deal with. I mean, it's hard for me to deal with, you know, as, as an officer. I mean, I think 
you know, as, as law enforcement, we get involved probably as much as, as anyone. I wish I would have kissed her goodbye. That morning I was running late for work and bound and determined to be on time. And I walked out of this house without kissing her. I'll never stop loving her or missing her. And I want her home. JC's story is like that of many other missing children. The statistics can be alarming. Every 40 seconds, a child becomes missing or is abducted in the United States. During the time it took us to bring you this story, another eight children have been taken from their loved ones. We'll close by showing you pictures of three other stolen lives. Nine-year-old Penny Lynn Davis went missing June 17, 1994 in Tenasket, Washington. Four-year-old Dwan Christian Sims went missing December 11, 1994 in Livonia, Michigan. Five-year-old Callie Ann Poulton went missing May 23, 1994 in East Rochester, New York. If you have any information about any of the children we showed you today, call 1-800-THE-LOST. We'll be right back.